learned this from my clients because I didn't, I didn't have any conception of parts. I thought the mind was unitary. We had different thoughts and emotions, but my clients started talking this language and they would talk about critics and the part that made them binge and then the part that made them feel worthless and empty and alone. And I got intrigued and started to, to explore all that and uh, ultimately found just by staying curious and actually by finding that thinking of them the way I was, you know, the culture thinks about them made things worse. So shifting out of that and just getting curious at some point, I started learning from my clients and their parts that they weren't what they seem. And that if you stayed open to the critic, it would tell you how much it's desperately trying to protect the client. And it, it would talk about other very vulnerable parts it was protecting uh, that were either carried a lot of pain or terror or worthlessness. And, uh, and as they talked, it sounded like they weren't living in the present, like they all thought the client was still quite young and they were stuck in these, these bad scenes in the past. And so all of that, as I explored it with other clients and got the same kinds of answers and other, uh, my colleagues started to pra practice it. We started to, it started to dawn on us that maybe these parts are sort of like children in a family. You know, family therapy's big insight was you can't take an acting out kid out of their family and tell them to stop doing it. You have to understand the dynamics of the family that are keeping him in that role and change that. And then he's freed up. He's kind of liberated to be who he's really wanting to be, who he really is. Maybe the same thing's happening with these parts. And so as we began asking more and more questions of what's keeping them in these roles, uh, we learned that there are several things. One is that they are frozen in time and think you're still quite young and think they still have to do this to keep you alive. And two, that they carry these extreme beliefs and emotions that I've come to call burdens that enter your system from the trauma or from an attachment injury and attach to these parts, almost like the coronavirus, and then drive the way the part operates. And so our culture and most of psychotherapy, uh, Gabor aside, uh, has made the mistake of assuming that they, they were what they, are, they seem to be and fighting with them or pathologizing them, seeing them as diseases and so on. But yeah, but they're like kids in a family, hence the name fa internal family systems, forced out of their naturally valuable states into roles that they don't like, uh, that actually can cause symptoms and other kinds of problems but that they feel are desperately necessary. And so the basic assumption then is it's the nature of the mind. It's the nature of the healthy mind to have parts that uh, we're born that way and they're all there to help us in our life because they all contain valuable resources and qualities and talents to help us, but they are forced out of their naturally valuable states by trauma and attachment injury into these roles. And some of them, like the, what are typically called these, these innocent, playful, loving inner children, creative, delightful, some of them, that's the state they're in before they get hurt. But once you get hurt, once you have some kind of trauma or betrayal or abandonment or rejection, those are the parts that are most sensitive. So those are the ones that take in those burdens the most and now aren't so much fun to be around because they have the power to totally overwhelm you and pull you back into those scenes of trauma or when you, your family hurts you or when your peers hurt you or when you, you know, we're, uh, you know, we have all these burdens in our culture of, racism, individualism, and so on that 
also have an impact. So the, the, once- the, the, Can I interrupt you the question here? Sure. So this is the part I want to understand. And it's, for all I agree with so much of what you say, that you see we're born with these parts. So picture to me a one day old infant. What parts do you see in that one day old infant? Yeah, so Barry Brazelton is an infant researcher and describes yeah five different states that infants rotate through and they shift from one to the other and so from my thinking those might be the parts that are online when you're born and the others are dormant and they'll they'll come forward when the time is right so um, for those of us yourself included who have kids you might remember when your kid was maybe two years old and you put him him or her to bed and it was a very compliant little child. And it's almost like overnight, the part came in that, tell, that says no to everything. So, and if, if uh, you grew up in a healthy, decent, healthy family, then they come in on time and they're, they're in their uh, appropriate roles. But then many of them, because we're not all raised in those kind of families are forced into these extreme roles. So, uh, so these younger parts that I'm describing are also vulnerable and get hurt the most. And then after they get hurt, we don't want anything to do with them because they can make us feel so bad. And so we kind of naturally tend to lock them away in inner basements or abysses. And everybody around us, because we're in this rugged individualist culture, tells us to do that. They tell us to just move on don't look back. You can't change what happened, just get over it. And so there's a big impetus to what I call exile, these parts just because they got hurt or terrified or shamed. And most of us succeed in doing that to one degree or another. But in doing that, we're really cutting off from much of our juice, all these wonderful qualities. And we other parts then are forced into these protector roles and have to manage the outside world so these exiles don't get triggered or manage our relationships or manage our appearance or so we call them managers they're, they're desperately trying to control everything so that nothing similar happens and and the the exile part that carries all these burdens doesn't get triggered and then start to overwhelm you because when that happens, that feels like you're going to die for many people. <clears throat> so, so a lot of parts get into what I call manager roles, which is one class of protector. Some of them become these inner critics who are criticizing you to try and get you to try harder and behave better and or they're criticizing you to try and get you to not take any risks and they try to tear you apart so you don't have any confidence. <clears throat> Some of them become these caretaker parts that you and I both identify in a big way in people with medical issues. Uh, Some of them become uh, parts that keep you in your head and don't let you feel your body or feel your emotions. And, become very intellectual and, and so on and so on. And there are lots of typical manager roles, but I want to clarify, that's just the role the part's in. It's not the essence of the part, such that when it's released from that role, it'll transform into its naturally healthy, valuable state. Uh, so again, just to emphasize, our culture and psychotherapy has mistaken the parts for the roles they've been forced into. and tried to throw the babies out with the bathwater.